there was a time when I was kind of embarrassed about the Mormonism thing. I mean, when I was a Mormon, there was a time I was embarrassed about the gay thing, and now I'm totally out there about both. And I, I'm like, I don't believe in religion. I'm an atheist. <laughs> but I think we have, as being gay, that we have, that we are in a unique position where I can say, like you can, I was like, no, my family goes back, they were the very first Mormons that there were, were all my family, um, go up, up to the present time, so mm -hmm. I understand, and I've been through it. And I've had, and I've gone through the entire Mormon experience from A to Z, and I get it, and I understand it. And I'm also gay, and I've come to the city, and I've lived this life. And I, I can see, I can speak, because I know both lives. And a lot of people, they don't know both lives. They know yeah. one life or the other, and yeah. so they're prejudiced against yeah. each other. Well, I got on the family website, and I, and I said, listen, if you vote, um, if you vote for, if you vote on Proposition 8 for uh, gays not to be able to be allowed to be married, you need to know that you're voting against one of your own family members. And I want you to have to live with that. And I said it in the, just the kindest and most gentlest way that I could, but I want them to know. I want them to have to live with the understanding. I know that it has an effect and what they, they yeah. do, it means something. Exactly. Because you can't, you know, choose for, you can't choose to like um, perpetuate hatred, which is really what you're doing, and discrimination, and to live in judgment of somebody and call yourself a Christian. Because that's not what Christ would do. I know, it's, it's exactly like the whole black thing. People say it's not, but it is exactly like it. I mean, when the Book of Mormon's like, they got darker because they were evil, or they got lighter because they were righteous, and stuff like that. Like, that kind of imagery put being put in your head that is so awful and damaging. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's so, like, not Christian. <laughs> but people, they create these double, I, I don't know, it's such cognitive dissonance where they create this double way of thinking in their life where they, they read it, but then they say, oh, but that doesn't apply to, you know, anybody I know. Or... Right. And they find ways to justify it. Yeah. To justify their own hatred or their own bigotry, you know. It's like, stop just... That was one of the, the greatest thing for me, like, when I finally left religion, mm -hmm. is to just be like, I do not have to justify anything anymore. Right. I can just believe what I believe and be comfortable with that. Instead of always say, you know, people saying, well, what about this or what about that? And I have to go, okay, yeah. well, reason one, reason two, reason B, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And try and convince myself and, and always having problems. And in church, you're always talking about the issues and trying to resolve them. But, you know, if you, th and if you think about it, you know, it, the Mormons are, are no worse than the other religions. They're uh, just a modern Amen religion. to that. So, you know, and I make sure I always bring that up, too, because people love, love, love to chastise the Mormons. I, that's why I think Catholics. it's... Me, too. When I when people yeah. attack Mormons, I go, like and what religion are you? Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. if you're Catholic or Jewish or any other thing like that, mm -hmm. you got some crazy-ass ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I'd be like, thank God I was, I was gay, because it... Made me always stuck in it. well no like I don't that's the whole thing is the unknown mm -hmm. and I think it always gave me that that um, point of view of always looking at the world through the position of the underdog mm -hmm. and I was rooting for the guy who was on the bottom or trying to see you know trying to figure things out instead of just accepting everything mm -hmm. and I don't know how much being gay shaped that point of view I mean I hope I would have still you know, chosen the same path as far as really wanting to understand what's right, what's wrong, what's truth, what's false, blah, 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 um, as best I could understand it. But, I mean, none of my other siblings seem to have shown an interest, so, so I, I can't say. Yeah. Whatever. You know, my, I had one uncle who said, well, who, was, who wound up going back and forth to me and bantering with me on the internet, and as loving as we possibly could, with respect that he's my father's brother. Right. But he said, you know, well, certainly you have to understand that it's not natural. You know, that procreation <laughs> is part of what is, you know, what is God's plan. And I said, well, you know what? Neither is a barren woman natural. And that wouldn't be part of God's plan anymore than a homosexual would be, as far as you're concerned. He could, of course, he can never respond. You know? Oh, well, I didn't think about that. 
but in the Mormon church, it's all about if you're married. If you get married and then you go together and you wind up with your own kingdom and I think you have other wives once you get there or something because there's some kind of convoluted mess with that and that you get to have your own star. You live on your own star, your own planet. So we don't go someplace to some planet, some little distant star out there and then start our own little colony. We already are. And that's called the difference between living in the future and living in the present. And when you're in the present, when you're in the now, then first of all, you can be you can be effectual. You can actually do something that's going to help with humanity because you're not thinking about the future. You're thinking about right now. Who can I be right now? How can I be right now? How can I live my life this very moment that is going to inspire others, that is going to bring myself to greatness, and that's going to um, be one with the universe rather than be fighting with it. Be one with my fellow man rather than fighting with them. And I see my relatives that pass on, I go to their funerals, I look at them, I'm so sad for them. I'm like, you never got it. You never got to really live in and experience this life and all that it has to offer. And there's so much life to live. And it's not just in a teeny tiny box. I don't know, one of the best things about <laughs> leaving Utah was coming to New York City because here, you can basically make up your own life. <laughs> and I kind of made it this life that somehow I wound up, I don't know, on the 46th floor of a, of a 46 story building here in the middle of Hell's Kitchen, um, right in the theater district. And um, this is what I do when I just want to kind of contemplate um, life. And uh, <laughs> I just kind of swing in my hammock. So funny. It's great. Yeah.